Welcome to PHI, Public Health Impact. I'm Cham Dallas. And I'm Phaedra Corso. In today's episode, we're going to be talking about one of our many global health collaborations. Well, Phaedra, our Center for Global Health partners with health officials from around the world with the object of developing new practices and developing new techniques and collaborative efforts to improve the lives of people around the globe. These international partnerships are so important because a lot of the health problems that we care about are similar from region to region. And for our students and faculty, it opens the way for student exchanges in terms of internships and study abroad programs and then faculty exchanges. It's, it's just a great partnership. Well, from these various efforts that we have going all around the world, who is it we're talking to today? We're talking to two of our faculty, Dr. Richard Schuster, who is the director of the Center for Global Health, and we're also talking to Dr. Carol Cotton, who is a professor in the Department of Health Promotion and Behavior, and she's also our liaison to the University of Zagreb in Croatia. Well, Phaedra will be speaking with several of these collaborative partners that are here visiting at our annual Global Health Symposium. Dr. Richard Schuster is a professor in the College of Public Health and also the director of the Center for Hi. Global Health. Richard, thanks for being here again. Well, thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. So why don't you tell us a little bit about the Center for Global Health? The Center for Global Health is now about three years old, and we've been doing all sorts of different programs. Our mission is to identify the best practices of healthcare anywhere in the world, and after we've identified those best practices, to help to promote their adoption and their adaption. So the first thing you do is you adapt it culturally, and then the second thing you do is you adopt it. That's uh, the, the mission, the, the, the goal for our Center for Global Health. And I understand that you're having your fifth annual symposium. Right. And uh, so I was wondering if you could tell us a little bit about the theme for this year and then maybe what you've done in the past. Sure. Well, uh, this year we have colleagues from the University of Zagreb in Croatia. Uh, they're coming from uh, both the School of Medicine and the School of Public Health. And that's very exciting for us here at UGA because we have our medical partnership and we have our College of Public Health. And so this is the first time that we've really brought together um, colleagues from medical schools and schools of public health to do a joint conference. This is our fifth symposium. And every year we sponsor and we affiliate with a different group of people, uh, usually from a different country, um, and we're focusing on our relationship with other universities. This year we're just so delighted to have our colleagues from the University of Zagreb in, in Croatia. In addition to the symposia that you sponsor, what other kind of international opportunities or projects do you have going on? Well, one of the key things that we're trying to do as part of the College of Public Health and part of the university is to identify other universities or health organizations that can become key partners for us. So that what we're really doing is we're creating a network. And what we're interested in doing is having faculty exchanges, student exchanges, joint teaching, and eventually the concept is that you get this huge faculty of affiliated people who network with each other. So maybe somebody at the University of Haifa and the University of Zagreb will develop a relationship that involves us or potentially doesn't involve us. It's a very exciting way to look at globalization of education. Wow, you've accomplished a lot in three years. Thanks it's, so much. It, it's been fun and it's interesting and uh, stay tuned. We'll see what next year's symposium is going to be. Dr. Carol Cotton is from the Department of Health Promotion and Behavior, and Carol, thank you so much for being here. I know you're the main link to this Croatia contingent, so I was hoping you could tell us a little bit how that relationship started. The relationship started in 1997 with a professor out of our public service and outreach area, Dr. Rusty Brooks, and he went to Croatia and developed a working relationship with a colleague there, and then in 2005, we then developed and signed a fund agreement for an endowment. It was a significant endowment. It's the only one in the country that is providing for consistent funding for not only faculty, but staff and students to exchange ideas and to work together. Wow, that's fantastic. And, and beyond just you and your involvement, who are the other faculty at UGA who've been, in, who've been involved? Um, we've had most of the deans, half of our deans at the University of Georgia have traveled to Croatia to see what the possibilities are to work with faculty that are there. And they're engaging with their own colleagues. 
Also, we have the Veterinary Medicine um, College. We have the Agricultural College. We have the College of Education. We have the Institute of Higher Ed, Franklin College of Arts and Sciences, and our SPIA are all involved in Croatia. And how is the symposium strengthening our relationship with this Croatia group? What we have found in the years that we've been in Croatia is what really matters is person-to-person -person relationships. And finding that faculty member here on the University of Georgia campus that shares your interests and shares your passion for a, a particular area of research is really important. And from that then comes the consistent and the long-term relationship to, to do research. So I want to ask you about the study abroad program. I'd like to hear some more details. We started the Croatia Study Abroad program in 2006, just after the endowment was um, signed here at the university. And we have been doing it consistently for seven straight years, and 2013 wow. will be our eighth year. Mm -hmm. We have taken between 20 students and 30 students every single year. We've had to turn some students away. It's very competitive. What's interesting and important about our study abroad is that we have four faculty members that are the faculty for study abroad. Mm -hmm. The four faculty members are not just in public health, though. They are in um, the SPIA, they are in public health, uh, Franklin College of Arts and Sciences, Germanic and Slavic languages, and the College of Environment and Design, Historic Preservation. So it is a unique program on the university campus because we just don't offer uh, courses for our public health students. Anybody around campus has applied and been accepted into our program. Wow, that sounds great. So tell us a little bit about who we're going to be talking to today. Well, we have five faculty members from the University of Zagreb College of Medicine and their Andrea Stomper School of Public Health. They are interested in pediatrics, they are interested in fertility and women's health, they're interested in sports science and in occupational health. There's also an interest in informatics, epidemiology, and medical statistics. Great, I can't wait to talk to them. Thank you. Thank you. Davor Yazek is the Vice Dean for International Affairs in the School of Medicine at the University of Zagreb. Welcome. Thank you very much on your kind invitation and thank the University of Georgia for inviting us. Absolutely, and we would love to hear a little bit more about your university. It's a large university. It has uh, 66,000 students. It comprises of uh, 30 schools or colleges and three academies. And uh, within this network is also a uh, school of medicine. School of Medicine has uh, 2,000 uh, enrolled students currently. I have to point out we have 240 international students as well. Wow, so how is it that you have a collaboration with the University of Georgia? Uh, this collaboration is actually based on a mutual uh, agreement on cooperation between the two universities. That means that uh, the uh, exchange of students, exchange of uh, teaching uh, staff or professors can take place. A launching of joint uh, projects, um, such activities is um, actually in place uh, within this agreement. And I'm just interested in these types of agreements. Is it, f is it not just schools of public health or schools of medicine, it's the entire university that's engaged? Indeed, it's the oh. entire university, but <coughs> some parts of our university have, may have special ties uh, to your uh, institutions. So as the Vice Dean for International Affairs, what does that entail? In Europe, we have one very important program on uh, student mobility. It's called Erasmus. Mm -hmm. And uh, we are in a position to actually launch mutual agreement on mobility of students and exchange of students within the European Union. However, there is also one important program that is Erasmus Mundus, which uh, actually covers uh, also some other continents like North America, South America, Australia. So I want to make sure I understand this. Does this mean that um, students can go from university to university within Europe and those credits still work towards their degree at their home university? Indeed, that's very important. There is one um, system which is called ECTS. So these are credit points that you earn as a student um, uh, during that mobility time and it is recognized at your home university. That's the mm. purpose of this program. So how many universities are involved in the Erasmus program where students can go from one university to another? Well, we have uh, for the time being uh, 25 uh, universities that are our partners and almost uh, double uh, number of places, exchange places. That would make 50. 
And how about American uh, American students? How many American students do you see come through these come through your, your university in this type of program? Well, we have uh, actually an uh, international program run in English, mm -hmm. and this is our way uh, to get American students involved. But I think it's also a very important window for further cooperation with University of Georgia because you don't need to spend a whole six years, uh, which is the course of the study of medicine in Europe. You can, you know, be uh, one semester or half uh, of academic year at our school and then uh, get back. So now I want to turn to your mm -hmm. um, collaboration with our School of Public mm -hmm. Health. What, um, what are you getting out of this symposium and what, are, what kind of collaborations do you hope to start? Uh, this is a very important event uh, for us. Um, in Croatia, uh, School of Public Health and uh, medical school are merged institutions. Actually, the medical uh, school is a kind of an older brother, if you <laughs> like to put it in a family situation, mm -hmm. and uh, the younger brother would be a School of Public Health. So we uh, would hope uh, to launch with the University of Georgia such programs as exchange of students, exchange of uh, teaching faculty, launch some new scientific project, launch a student mini project, scientific projects mm -hmm. uh, that would last approximately two uh, months and some other, um, let's say, initiatives uh, would take place. Well, that sounds great to me, especially as a faculty member who would love to come to Croatia for a <laughs> Thank little you. while. Thank you. You're mostly welcome. <laughs> and I would like to extend cordial invitation to everybody at University of Georgia to join us and come to Zagreb. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Dinka Baldani is an MD, PhD in obstetrics and gynecology. Welcome to the show. Thank you for inviting me. Absolutely. And I'd love to hear about your research. The focus of my interest is the polycystic ovary syndrome, or PCOS. Mm -hmm. It's the most common endo endocrine disorder in reproductive age women. Mm -hmm. um, now, now we now know that almost every five, uh, every fifth woman is is affected with this. Okay, so tell me a little and bit about what is the syndrome? Like, what are the symptoms, okay. and what does it involve? Uh, that is multi-sided sy syndrome. Uh, it means that no single woman. Um, share the, the exactly the same clinical signs, mm -hmm. but the most clinical signs is uh, hyperantigenism, which means elevated levels of male hormones, which is usually clinically presented with uh, male type uh, terminal hair gr growth and distribution, mm -hmm. edual acne, severe adolescent acne. And uh, the other frequent sign is a, a normal menstrual cycle. Mm -hmm. And usually it's very much connected with obesity. So uh, what is your research trying to do to advance this field? Okay, we know very much that nowadays the obesity of the mothers, of the pregnant women, influence uh, the, the presence of that syn syndrome in the offsprings. Mm -hmm and that the obesity worsened very much the symptoms and, and the metabolic risk of that syndrome. And if you can imagine that every fifth woman is, is, uh, is affected with that syndrome, so uh, the very big thing will be to, to prevent obesity, even to prevent the weight gain even in the lean woman. So and let me just ask you about obesity because this is such yeah. a huge topic here in the United States, of course. Do you have the same um, no. incidence of obesity no. in Croatia? No. But now we have uh, growing childhood obesity, mm -hmm. so we can expect in following years that we are going to have the same problems as you are. Right. And what are you hoping to get out of this um, collaboration with the University of Georgia? I'm doing preventive medicine, you know, because I, I, would, I prevent obesity in the pregnant woman, I prevent obesity in every reproductive woman. So maybe we are going to learn from you how to prevent obesity, and maybe you're going to learn uh, from us how medical doctors are trying to prevent many consequences. Right. Yeah, I think you, you have a nice model of where prevention is the most important thing yeah. and treatment comes second whereas yeah. we kind of go about it the opposite yeah. way so well thank you very much and thank we you. look forward to working with you okay thank you Aida Moikic is an MD PhD and has a Masters of Science and she has a specialty in pediatrics thank you so much for being here with us today I'd love to hear about your research in pediatrics 
Thank you for inviting me. Uh, as you said, I am a medical doctor, a specialist of pediatrics, and uh, my scope of interest is uh, social pediatrics. So I'm interested in about different social influences on child health and disease. Okay, so what, when you say social influences, can you give me a couple of examples? Um, uh, parental stimulation, uh, health care, environment, general um, conditions in society. I'm interested in that wider uh, scope of disease, not uh, just on that clinical part. And what has your research um, found? Uh, in the last years, I'm the head of Croatian Ministry of Science project, injury prevention and uh, safety promotion for preschool children, because injuries are the uh, leading cause of death right. after the first year of the life, through the whole childhood. And uh, so, and it is only the tip of iceberg, mortality, and the injuries represent huge burden also because of usage of health system and of social services uh, because of hospital admission, uh, emergency care visits, uh, needs for rehabilitation, uh, suffering and pain and lowering the quality of life. Uh, so in the last years, uh, together with, uh, ministry, with uh, our Ministry of Health, uh, we uh, introduced that project, so Ministry of Science and Ministry of Health, uh, with the aim to uh, stimulate uh, primary health care professionals to be more involved in a primary prevention. So we uh, organize uh, workshops for uh, health professionals mm -hmm. and also produce different educational materials for professionals and for parents. So are, are you hoping to have um, a s some kind of collaboration here with colleagues at the University of Georgia to, to do joint research? I mean, what is your goal here for the symposium? Already I uh, am involved in cooperation with University of Georgia through uh, exchanging students. Mm -hmm. I was a mentor uh, to one of them before several years, uh, but now we want to improve that collaboration with uh, the colleagues who are in the specific narrow uh, fields uh, in which, for example, me and my colleagues are interested so that uh, we can work together in the future on the research and also on public health interventions. Great, thank you so much. Thank you for inviting me. Milan Milosevic is a PhD MD with a specialty in occupational and sports medicine. Yes. Thank you for being here. I'm glad. <laughs> so tell me a little bit about your research. So uh, I'm senior assistant at uh, University of Zagreb Medical School and uh, my research, my speciality is first occupational health. Uh, what I'm doing is uh, research among uh, healthcare personnel, how to uh, maintain and uh, fight uh, stress at work, burnout, and everything regarding health workers. And the other part, this is, which is connected to the sports medicine, now we are implementing our uh, knowledge about how to fight back uh, uh, misuse of supplements and uh, doping among sportsmen oh, and okay. especially among young athletes. Okay, so I've got lots of questions. Yes, yeah. Because it seems like a little bit of unrelated areas of research. Uh, or how, how are you combining the two together? We are combining because uh, in Croatia, uh, public health is connected to the uh, medical school. Mm -hmm. We are uh, together. And uh, we know uh, in, during our specialization in occupational sports medicine, we have both knowledge in public health and clinical health, which is, uh, I think, combined together can uh, become something much more uh, stronger. Uh, we have our, in our department for environmental and occupational health and our university we have also a uh, health clinic to examine also sportsmen, also as the workers, uh -huh. and we try to become some kind of supportive for both of them, only, not only for workers, but also for the sportsmen. Mm -hmm. And uh, now uh, we are tracking uh, lots of ways uh, that they can use uh, to maintain their workability and also sports ability. Mm -hmm. For example, they can use some kind of supplements that can boost the, um, their energy levels, energy levels uh -huh. or uh, endurance, also, not only like sportsmen, but also in daily work. So let me ask about stress in the workplace. Yes. 
I wouldn't know anything about that. But um, <laughs> let me just ask, what what are what are you learning about how to deal with stress in the uh, workplace? My PhD topic, which what uh, I'm doing in Croatia, is how to uh, make a questionnaire to measure stress level among hospital workers mm -hmm. because it is very difficult to make a uh, measure for something which is subjective mm. because the same level of stress for me or for you is not uh, is not uh, perceived the same right uh, there there is also lots of examples that people are on night shifts and for someone it is very stressful for others it's, it is not they mm -hmm. just enjoy it to be on night shift so we, we actually have a collaboration with the University of Heidelberg, and I know they're doing some interesting work in this area as well. Do you work with that group as uh, well? No, we, uh, our major collaboration with the uh, University in Vienna. In Vienna. Yeah, we mm -hmm. have lots of strong with, with Austria. And now our plan is that we make some collaboration with also University of Georgia. We are planning to make some projects together to make maybe exchange students. We have lots of uh, uh, things done in field of uh, uh, health of healthcare workers and now also in the field of health among professional athletes. All right, well thank you so much for being here. No, no problem. Zdenka Sanitsky is also an MD PhD with a concentration um, in biostatistics. Yeah. Thank you for being here. Thank you very much for having me here. Absolutely, and I, we'd love to hear a little bit about your research. Uh, I'm an associate professor of biostatistics uh, at the department of, uh, we call it medical statistics, epidemiology and medical informatics. So basically I teach statistics to undergraduate and postgraduate, mm -hmm. and I teach some medical informatics for postgraduate. And do you also do research? Yes, I, I'm doing some research, some uh, project, I have my own project, uh, it's predictive models in healthcare. It was supposed to be predictive models in public healthcare, but you know it's easier to have just healthcare, so it's much wider. Right. And you can do maybe some more. Uh, and I did some international projects uh, for WHO, World Health Organization, uh, some kind of prediction algorithms uh, of uh, childhood poisoning in Egypt, in Cairo, and some other projects. Okay, so explain to our viewers, what does it mean to have a predictive model? What is that? Uh, so predictive models is something what you would like uh, uh, to, to model as, as a, uh, to have a prediction of something. Mm -hmm. So it means if you have a child who is poisoned, then uh, you would uh, search for uh, uh, some ideas or question, should you bring that child to the hospital or not? Mm -hmm. in a rural countries in Africa or uh, in, in a settings where uh, you don't have some kind of uh, health support so you can compare it uh, to the USA or even to Croatia. I think the um, comparison we have here we call them decision aids or decision support yes. systems. You call also the clinical decision rules or exactly. something like that and actually this is some kind of a decision aid for the target population it may be not just for physicians it could be for some other persons who should make decision even for parents if they are just by own. And what are you hoping to get out of the symposium? Well, I'm looking forward about that symposium. Uh, uh, I uh, already met uh, Dr. Vina, uh, he was in Zagreb, and I'm looking forward to uh, meet Dr. Ebel. Mm -hmm. He was doing a lot of work in that clinical decision role uh, area. And also uh, I, uh, I'm collaborating with Dr. Cotton. She is now leading almost a decade uh, students to the Croatia uh, that study abroad mm -hmm. and I'm uh, now working with her almost three years and uh, we are thinking about some projects about the traffic safety about uh, preventing traffic injuries these predictive models right and uh, to uh, figure out uh, how to make uh, a team of uh, collaborators and now we are having just an uh, opportunity uh, uh, to the World Bank, they are financing uh, some Croatian researchers to be in contact with some uh, uh, Croatians by origin abroad, just to have a contact to the international research projects. Wonderful, wonderful. So this is opportunity actually for Croatia and to be in contact with, with the people in USA or in Europe to help us to, uh, in, you know, to connect to some more international projects. Great. Well, thank you so much for being here. Thanks. Phaedra, it's been really interesting to learn about these collaborative relationships, this long-term relationship we've had with the Croatian faculty members from the University of Zagreb. 
And we are truly grateful to the Center for Global Health and Dr. Carol Cotton for forging the partnership with these colleagues. The Global Health Symposium is such a great opportunity for learning as we kind of go round the world with these different uh, collaborative relationships that we have. And it shows for our students, we've got such great opportunities as well, whether they go um, for internships or for study abroad programs, they're really taking the, the information they learned here in the College of Public Health and applying it internationally. You know, with options like these, it's no surprise that the University of Georgia is producing such a great crop of these global health professionals. So join us next time on PHI Public Health Impact, where we cover another very important global health issue, tuberculosis.